15 actors destroyed by drugs. Uncover the identity of which actor used electroshock therapy and delve into the compelling reasons behind it. This video will explore the harrowing tales of 15 actors whose lives were shattered by drug addiction. Charlie Sheen. A limited number of actors become synonymous with a single character quite like Charlie Sheen, whose standout performance in the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men earned him multiple accolades and a fortune. Sheen was celebrated by global audiences, though he may have made some questionable financial decisions. Sheen's entrance into the spotlight soon spiralled into a life filled with extravagant festivities and substance misuse. His initial attempt at rehabilitation was in 1998, but his battle with addiction persisted for several years to come. Furthermore, Sheen faced allegations of assault following a rumoured incident with his spouse in December 2009, leading to another stint in rehab. Nevertheless, by October 2010, he was released and once again found himself amidst controversy. Five years on, Charlie tested positive for HIV and made his diagnosis public. While this revelation did little to improve Charlie's already tarnished reputation, it did serve to heighten awareness about HIV among the general population. Since this announcement, Charlie has continued to be a figure of controversy, infamous for his extravagant parties and startling scandals. During a notorious roast in 2011, several comedians took turns skewering Charlie's sensational personal scandals and notorious party habits. Whether Charlie will ever overcome this remains to be seen. Make sure you stay tuned till the end to learn about a beloved actor whose life was cut short by substance abuse. If you thought Charlie Sheen's tale was wild, just wait for the next one and remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more incredible stories. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson made his mark in Hollywood in the 1980s, rising to fame with a starring role in the 1981 movie Gallipoli. For two decades, he was a prominent figure in the acting world. Despite his success, his career took a hit due to several negative statements and personal issues. Throughout the 2000s, Mel remained relatively hidden from the public eye and had few job opportunities until he made a spectacular comeback as the director of the 2016 movie Hacksaw Ridge. However, during this period, Mel faced challenges he rarely discusses. He has openly confessed that he started drinking at 13 years old, which led to a history of alcohol-related incidents. His issues with alcohol first became notable in 1984 when Mel was prohibited from driving in Canada for three months following a drunk driving accident. He encountered legal trouble for drunk driving again in 2006, which resulted in three years probation. Despite these troubles, Mel's professional demeanor and timeliness on set remained well respected in Hollywood. Industry peers were astonished when he revealed his habit of drinking five pints of alcohol each morning. Alcoholism is just something that my family struggles with. Mel opened up to the Hollywood Recovery Center, acknowledging his deep personal familiarity with the issue. Whitney Houston, renowned as The Voice, Whitney Houston's legacy as a distinguished singer and actress in the American entertainment industry is undeniable. With global record sales surpassing 200 million, her talent was unmistakable. Yet beneath the surface of her melodious achievements lay a tumultuous personal life. Whitney's struggles with addiction were long speculated, and in a candid 2009 conversation with Oprah Winfrey, she confronted these rumors head on. Whitney acknowledged her use of marijuana along with more potent drugs, sharing her reasons for turning to these substances. When it gets to the stage where you just sit at home and try to cover what you don't want others to see, it hurts. That's when you take more, just so nobody has to see you cry. Furthermore, Whitney disclosed her efforts to seek help, revealing her stints in rehabilitation centers in 2003 and 2004. Despite her lifelong battle with addiction, Whitney's demise in 2012 was a sorrowful event. The post-mortem examination revealed the presence of alcohol and various drugs in her system, which presumably played a role in her premature death. Whitney's openness about her challenges not only marked her personal journey, but also served as a beacon of hope for many grappling with similar issues, illustrating the power of vulnerability and the impact of sharing one's story. Courtney Love, Courtney Love, the acclaimed singer and actress, has made an indelible impact on the realms of music and cinema over the last four decades, beginning in the 1980s. 
Her career achievements, however, were often overshadowed by her tumultuous union with legendary musician Kurt Cobain. Described by a Vanity Fair journalist as a strange love, their bond was nonetheless one of mutual devotion. Tragically, their shared commitment extended to heroin use, which began during their courtship and escalated, attracting negative media attention and causing severe health complications. The situation deteriorated further when Courtney was expecting and had to abruptly cease drug use for the well-being of their unborn child. The strain on their relationship intensified when allegations surfaced in the press, suggesting Courtney continued her drug use during pregnancy. Courtney has stated that these claims deeply affected Kurt's psychological state, contributing to his decision to end his life two years later. In the time since, Courtney has asserted that she has successfully managed her addiction, undergoing multiple rehab stints and enduring several probation breaches. She expresses confidence that her substance abuse days are behind her, despite a minor setback in 2018. The veracity of her assertion is yet to be confirmed. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan soared to fame in Hollywood during the latter years of the 1990s and the early 2000s, only to quickly squander her rising star status with her notorious party lifestyle and a series of poor choices. Her roles in The Parent Trap and films like Freaky Friday had once made her highly sought after by producers. However, their eagerness cooled off upon hearing about her habit of attending late-night gatherings, particularly after several studio heads voiced their frustrations over Lindsay's tardiness or absence from film sets due to exhaustion. Post-2007, Lindsay found herself ostracized within the industry and her personal struggles would drastically escalate. In the years following 2007, Lindsay faced a number of DUI charges related to her involvement in car accidents while under the influence. During one of her court appearances for a DUI charge, Lindsay admitted, It is too clear to me. My life is out of control and this is due to my addictions to drugs and alcohol. She went on to say, I recently relapsed and made regrettable decisions. I want to be healthy and control my life again, which is the reason I asked for medical help to do this. I'll take these steps to fix my life, and I hope that with time, I can overcome these issues. Since leaving rehab in 2013, Lindsay appears to have turned a corner concerning her battle with substance abuse. However, her earlier frequent drug use had already done significant damage to both her career and personal relationships. Tara Reid Tara Reid gained fame through her roles in films like American Pie and The Big Lebowski. Beyond her acting career, Tara has been featured in a plethora of magazines, including Rolling Stone, Cosmo Girl and Playboy. Additionally, Tara ventured into the business world by opening her restaurant, ketchup and launching her own clothing line. However, alongside her business achievements, Tara struggled with several detrimental habits and lifestyle choices. In a candid interview, Tara revealed that she had undergone plastic surgery in 2006, which resulted in permanent harm to her body. Further compounding her health issues was her regular consumption of alcohol and other harmful substances. By 2008, Tara's struggles led her to seek help and enter a rehabilitation facility, a decision she later described as life-saving. It was the greatest choice I ever made. She reflected on her rehab experience. Rehab saved my life. Today, Tara continues to be a public figure. Although she acknowledges the irreversible impacts of her past substance misuse, she is committed to moving past them and focusing on her future. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you, Britney Spears. Globally celebrated as pop royalty, Britney Spears became an icon through her influential music and acting, shaping the cultural landscape of the early 21st century. Her fight for autonomy, particularly her battle against conservatorship, gained significant attention, culminating in her release from it in 2021. Despite her fame and fortune, Britney's life was not without its shadows. In 2007, a revelation from a past collaborator exposed a hidden aspect of her life. The insider disclosed that by the time of his engagement in 2007, Britney had been battling drug addiction for half a decade. Her attempts at sobriety were fraught with challenges. Moreover, during the conservatorship, Britney was given stimulants like Adderall, which according to Fernando Flores, a police officer who frequently encountered her, caused erratic behavior including outbursts about alternate realities. 
Since regaining her freedom, Brittany has made strides in recovery, yet the repercussions of her past substance misuse persist. River Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is widely recognized for his role in the 2019 film Joker. However, his older sibling, River, is not as well known. River took part in several moderately successful films during the 1980s and 90s, but these days, not many recall his contributions to acting. This lack of memory can largely be attributed to River's ongoing battle with drug addiction, a battle that would ultimately cost him everything precious to him. In June 1989, River's partnership with actress Martha Plimpton crumbled after she found out that River was engaging in drug use. Following this, River attempted to conceal his drug problems, worried that they might ruin his acting career. Unfortunately, River was so successful in hiding his issues that hardly anyone recognized the peril he was in. Without anyone stepping in or helping River get to a rehabilitation facility, his situation worsened. In October 1993, River succumbed to a drug overdose, tragically ending his life. Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher is celebrated globally for her iconic role as Princess Leia in the Star Wars saga. After the monumental success of these films, Carrie enjoyed a long career filled with a variety of acting roles and fame. However, Carrie's off-screen life had its struggles. During a conversation with Stephen Fry, Carrie opened up about her long battle with bipolar disorder. This mental health challenge led to severe mood swings and depression, which Carrie chose to address in harmful ways. To mitigate the impact of her bipolar disorder, Carrie turned to misusing drugs and prescription medication. In a discussion on psychology today, she confessed, drugs made me feel normal, emphasizing that they kept me keen. Beyond drug abuse for self-medication, Carrie also pursued electroconvulsive therapy in her attempts to manage her mental health condition. Despite these struggles not sabotaging her professional life, they nonetheless severely harmed her physical and mental well-being. Carrie's unhealthy choices contributed to various health issues, including sleep apnea and heart arteriosclerosis. These issues ultimately culminated in Carrie's tragic passing in December 2016, when she was only 60 years old. Reflecting on her mother's challenges, Carrie's daughter, Billy Lord, expressed, My mother struggled with drug addiction and mental issues her whole life, concluding, in the end, she died from it. Nick Stahl. Nick Stahl's journey into the spotlight began with his childhood role in The Man Without a Face in 1993, followed by a series of television appearances. Beyond the screen, Nick's personal life flourished with his marriage to actress Rose Murphy in June 2009, though the relationship ended in divorce three years later due to Nick's erratic behavior. In May 2012, Nick's disappearance caused alarm, but it was soon revealed that he had checked himself into a rehabilitation facility. Later that year, Nick was found in a compromising situation with an adult film actress. While suspicions of drug influence arose, conclusive evidence was lacking. The situation escalated when, in June 2013, Nick was apprehended for methamphetamine possession in Hollywood. In a candid admission about his substance use, Nick stated, I didn't discriminate, revealing a history of using various drugs to alter his state of mind. Having taken a break from acting, Nick is now making a comeback and aspires to revive his career in the industry. Errol Flynn. Lovers of Golden Age cinema often remember Errol Flynn with fondness. His memorable performances in The Adventures of Robin Hood and Captain Blood cemented his status as a symbol of elegance and suave romance. But away from the camera, Errol's life was markedly less glamorous. From the outset of his fame, Errol developed a notorious image as an excessive drinker, a habitual smoker and a user of illegal drugs. In addition to his substance exploits, Errol frequently engaged in brief flings with young starlets at numerous social gatherings. His notorious pursuits of women culminated in accusations from two women who claimed Errol had coerced them. This became a high-profile case and, despite being acquitted, his reputation suffered a severe blow. The actor's health deteriorated due to his addictions, leading to his untimely death in 1959 when he was just 50 years old. Jan Michael Vincent. Jan Michael Vincent embarked on his acting journey in the 1960s and by the 80s, he had achieved major success with his role in the popular TV series, Airwolf. 
His portrayal in Airwolf, along with earning a staggering $200,000 per episode, brought him widespread fame. However, Jan faced significant personal challenges off-screen that complicated his career trajectory. Following the conclusion of Airwolf, Jan disclosed his battle with drug addiction during the show's production and announced his intentions to seek assistance. He encountered legal troubles, being arrested three times for drug possession and faced charges of assault against his former wife. Additionally, Jan was involved in several bar altercations, leading to more assault charges. Ultimately, he entered rehabilitation in 1988. Post-rehab, the 1990s, saw Jan involved in three car accidents, one nearly fatal and another causing severe injuries to his throat that permanently affected his voice. Despite these incidents, Jan did not alter his lifestyle and continued to face issues with substance abuse, legal troubles and car accidents until his passing in February 2019 at 74 years old. Judy Garland Judy Garland became a household name at a tender age through her iconic role as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Unlike her peers in the 1940s and 50s, Judy was immersed in the world of film legends instead of childhood play. Her remarkable talent was recognized with numerous accolades, including a Golden Globe, and she even made history as the first woman to win a Grammy Award. However, by the 1960s, Judy's star began to dim, leading up to her premature demise. A deeply guarded secret that Judy harbored throughout her life ultimately became her undoing. Her early rise to fame was a double-edged sword, exerting an enormous pressure that adversely affected her self-perception and mental well-being. Criticism from film professionals concerning Judy's appearance had a significant negative impact on her from a young age. To manage the mental hardships this provoked, she started using drugs, a decision that ultimately exacerbated her problems. Judy's dependency on alcohol and drugs took a toll on her career during the late 1950s and early 60s, coupled with leading her into severe financial issues and amassing considerable debt. Tragically, it was her addiction that led to her passing in June 1969. Despite the challenges that plagued her life and career due to substance misuse, Judy continued to be cherished by her family and fans worldwide. At Judy's memorial, famed actor James Mason noted Judy's unparalleled capacity to move people deeply, saying, she gave so generously that there was never any currency which could repay her. Majek Fashek. The Rainmaker, better known as Majek Fashek, was a celebrated Nigerian songwriter and performer in the 1980s and 90s. He penned many unforgettable songs and collaborated with a lineup of stars, including Snoop Dogg, Michael Jackson, and Beyonce. However, Majek encountered a troubled period in the 2000s and 2010s due to his battle with drugs. The revelation in 2015 that Majek was nearly destitute and grappling with drug dependency shocked fans globally. Images that made rounds in the press depicted him aged and incredibly gaunt, a consequence of severe drug misuse. Majek entered a rehabilitation facility that year to address his addictions. He managed to overcome his struggles and spent his remaining days creating music and cherishing moments with loved ones. Majek's life came to a close in June 2020, when he died at 57 years old. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos. Please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. DMX. In the 90s and early 2000s, DMX rose to prominence as one of the world's leading rappers and actors. His chart-topping tracks like Where the Hood At and X Gone Give It To You became immediate classics and remain beloved hits to this date. DMX could have sustained his status as a rap legend, however. His personal struggles ultimately hindered his career and impacted his personal life. DMX's legal issues were numerous, yet his longest battle was with a specific drug, colloquially termed hard rock. DMX cited his introduction to the drug at the young age of 14, which led to a spiraling addiction that necessitated repeated stays in rehabilitation centers. With the birth of his child, DMX vowed to pursue sobriety, but a singular relapse led to a catastrophic outcome. DMX suffered an overdose from drugs, which resulted in his passing in April 2021 at 50 years old. Despite the battles with addiction throughout his life, DMX is remembered and revered as a hip-hop icon. Macaulay Culkin Macaulay Culkin's face is undeniably one of the most instantly recognized, having lit up the silver screen as the star of the beloved festive film Home Alone. 
Audiences from Florida to New York watched as the Home Alone series soared to incredible heights along with other box office successes like Richie Rich. Culkin quickly became familiar to families everywhere and the fame brought him financial rewards beyond his wildest dreams. Yet behind the delightful grin and on-screen mischief, Culkin was imperceptibly succumbing to the pressures of his fame. With a net worth reaching around $13 million, Macaulay took the dramatic step of legally emancipating himself from his parents. This move marked a profound change in the direction of his personal and professional life. The impetus behind his decision was the drive to take command of his own destiny and have sole discretion over his finances. The ensuing media frenzy plunged Macaulay into a tumultuous period marked by substance misuse, including prescription drugs. Despite this, he navigated the scrutiny adeptly, with only a 2004 arrest bringing his issues to light. This incident involved charges of marijuana possession and having a controlled substance sans prescription. A startling image of Macaulay emerged in 2012, depicting him as emaciated and clutching an energy drink causing global fan concern. The once cherubic actor appeared drastically altered, prompting speculation about his well-being. However, Macaulay promptly addressed the rumors, reaffirming his sobriety and dispelling claims of a relapse Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore captured hearts worldwide as the adorable Gertie in the 1982 classic E.T., directed by Steven Spielberg. However, the glare of stardom often comes with a steep cost. Drew's rapid ascent to fame led her down a perilous road that threatened to unravel her achievements. By the tender age of 11, Drew was grappling with alcohol misuse, a startling reality for someone so young. More alarming was her descent into cocaine dependency at just 12 years old. The following year, at 13, Drew's personal turmoil led her to rehab after a suicide attempt. Her struggles with addiction and a self-destructive path resulted in her being ostracized by the Hollywood community, jeopardizing a once bright future in the industry. Drew Barrymore's tumultuous upbringing was significantly influenced by her family environment. Her father, John Drew Barrymore, struggled with alcoholism and violence, while her mother showed a lack of commitment to parenting. These factors contributed to Drew's challenging early years. However, Drew found the strength to seek help and by 16 had completed multiple rehabilitation programs, leading to a semblance of normalcy. She had to make the difficult choice to leave behind her old social life in New York City for a circle of sober companions. Drew's journey was far from smooth as she faced renewed struggles with alcohol following a distressing divorce in 2016. Drew has spoken candidly about turning to alcohol to dull the emotional pain, a battle she describes as walking through the fire to achieve sobriety. Today she has triumphed over her past afflictions and stands as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. Heath Ledger Heath Ledger's tale is a heart-wrenching illustration of the tragic consequences that drug misuse can inflict on a flourishing talent. Heath was born in the city of Perth, Australia, on the 4th of April 1979 and he unearthed his passion for performing at a tender age. At merely 10 years old he took on the role of Peter Pan in a local school play. Having completed high school by 16, Heath, along with his companion Tommy DiCarlo, set off for Sydney, Australia with high hopes for his acting career. In the year 1997 Heath debuted on the big screen with Black Rock. Not long after he ventured to the United States and there his career skyrocketed, especially once he took center stage in the 1999 hit, 10 Things I Hate About You. Nonetheless, the part that imprinted his legacy in the hearts of many was none other than the Joker in The Dark Knight, a depiction that is as legendary as the actor himself. Away from the limelight, Heath Ledger's life was far from the success his career depicted. Despite his professional ascent, his personal affairs were in disarray. Reports indicated that Heath was struggling with drug misuse and severe insomnia, managing only two hours of sleep nightly. These issues contributed to his premature passing on January 22, 2008, when he was only 28 years old. Heath was discovered lifeless in his bed by his housekeeper and masseuse. Shortly after their discovery, emergency responders declared him deceased. The news of his passing reverberated throughout Hollywood, and the subsequent release of the toxicology report compounded the tragedy.
It showed that his death resulted from an accidental overdose of a mix of prescription medications, including painkillers, anti-anxiety medication and sleep aids. While unverified, there were also claims of Heath's past use of cocaine and heroin. Heath Ledger's life and death serve as a poignant reminder that the roles actors play can sometimes reflect their own personal struggles. Nicole Ritchie Nicole Ritchie, the progeny of music legend Lionel Ritchie and a star in her own right, first encountered fame during her childhood and pursued it ever since. Her rise in Hollywood commenced with her participation in The Simple Life, a reality series she led alongside her buddy Paris Hilton. The show catapulted her into fame, making Nicole a well-known figure across Hollywood. However, the glare of the limelight brought with it challenges as Nicole turned to drugs and alcohol as a means of managing the pressures of her celebrated lifestyle. This lifestyle took a toll on her professional life and personal relationships, culminating in 2007 when she faced arrest for driving dangerously and was sentenced to spend four days behind bars. During this challenging time, Nicole experienced a profound realization. She was on a perilous descent with no means of stopping. Committed to changing her trajectory, Nicole embarked on the difficult road to recovery. In 2008, she entered a rehabilitation facility, ready to face her addiction and the deep-seated issues fueling her reliance on substances. With unwavering resolve, Nicole triumphed over her addiction. She has since dedicated herself to raising awareness about drug abuse, aiming to prevent others from following the destructive path she once walked. Nicole's perseverance allowed her to emerge victorious, transforming her life for the better. Robert Downey Jr. Long before Robert Downey Jr. donned the Iron Man suit and soared to Marvel stardom, he faced personal trials that nearly derailed his acting journey. The roots of these challenges lay in his childhood home. His father, avant-garde director Robert Downey Sr., struggled with addiction and controversially introduced his son to marijuana at just six years old. This shared substance use forged an intense connection between them, leading to Robert Jr.'s habitual alcohol consumption. Nonetheless, his talent shone through, and by the mid-1980s, Robert had carved out a niche for himself in Hollywood. His stint on Saturday Night Live paved the way for significant roles in John Hughes' films Weird Science and The Pickup Artist in 1987. Despite his severe substance dependencies, Robert Downey Jr.'s ascent in the film industry was meteoric. His charm and talent earned him widespread acclaim, yet his personal battles began to cast a shadow over his professional life, nearly halting his career entirely. In a particularly alarming incident, a heavily inebriated Robert inadvertently entered a neighbor's residence and collapsed in their bed. His persistent absences from court-ordered drug tests led to a three-year prison sentence in 1999. Robert served part of this term in a Californian treatment center for substance abuse and the state prison in Corcoran. In 2001, while under parole, Robert Downey Jr. was discovered in a disoriented state on the streets of Culver City, California without shoes. This unfortunate event led to his arrest and the subsequent loss of his role on Ally McBeal along with other acting opportunities. Rather than incarceration, the court mandated rehabilitation for the financially destitute actor. Susan Downey, Robert's spouse, recounts that in 2003, faced with an ultimatum, Robert made the pivotal decision to renounce drugs. His determination to overcome his struggles allowed him to regain the affection and support of his fans, leading to an extraordinary revival of his acting career, which is often cited as one of the most remarkable turnarounds in the annals of Hollywood. David Hasselhoff In 2007, a disheartening video surfaced online showcasing David Hasselhoff, the beloved Baywatch star, in an inebriated condition. Filmed by his daughter Taylor Ann Hasselhoff at their Las Vegas residence, it depicted Hasselhoff on the kitchen floor, clumsily eating a hamburger. This footage shocked many, as Hasselhoff outwardly seemed to be in control, yet it revealed his hidden battle with addiction that was dominating his life. Following the release of this video, Hasselhoff faced a custody dispute that nearly resulted in him losing his two teenage daughters. This event was a wake-up call for Hasselhoff, who realized he needed to urgently address his issues and transform his life. David Hasselhoff's initial encounter with rehab due to alcohol issues dates back to 2002. This was followed by a DWI charge in 2004, reflecting his ongoing struggle with intoxication. In 2006, 
He faced an allegation from British Airways for being excessively inebriated to fly, a claim he disputes. Presently, Hasselhoff is actively addressing his alcohol dependency and has steered clear of adverse media scrutiny recently. It is hoped that he will continue to conquer his personal challenges and maintain his celebrated presence in film. Echoing his sentiments, he states, I've been looking for freedom. As he welcomed the new year, Anna Nicole Smith. Anna Nicole Smith, the enchanting American model, actress and TV star, won over countless fans with her engaging charisma and striking looks. She launched her successful career with a Playboy magazine spread in May 1992, quickly becoming an unforgettable icon. Her rise continued as she was honored with the Playmate of the Year title in 1993 and subsequently modeled for renowned fashion labels such as Hennis and Moritz, Heatherette and Guess. Posthumous investigations revealed that Smith had endured lifelong chronic pain, which unfortunately went undiagnosed by her medical providers. Smith's search for pain relief led her down a tragic path of substance misuse, habitually consuming copious amounts of prescription pain medication. With the help of her lawyer companion, who obtained the medications using fictitious prescription names to keep their use out of public scrutiny, she maintained access to these potent drugs. Tragically, this continuous stream of medication played a significant role in her premature death. The country was plunged into grief on February 8, 2007, when the somber news of her passing was announced. She was said to have passed away due to acute combined drug intoxication. In her quest to alleviate her chronic pain, she inadvertently succumbed to the depths of substance abuse, a battle from which she would not recover. Anna's tragic narrative serves as a stark reminder of the destructive consequences of drug addiction. Amanda Bynes Rising to fame as a beloved child actor on Nickelodeon's All That, this star's popularity soared even higher when she ventured into the film industry. Her talent became widely recognized after she played significant roles in Big Fat Liar and What a Girl Wants. However, it was her role in She's the Man that led to an unexpected downturn. Completing the film and seeing herself on screen in a male disguise triggered a severe depression that lasted four to six months due to her dissatisfaction with her appearance. Her growing obsession with how she looked led her to start using Adderall, believing it would help her maintain a slender figure as it was being touted as the new skinny pill. This was a distressing period for Bynes, and it nearly derailed her entire career. Amanda Bynes ventured into the world of substance experimentation, engaging with drugs such as cocaine and ecstasy. This marked a descent into the abyss of drug abuse. During a hiatus from her career, Bynes adopted a lifestyle dominated by substance use, accompanied by erratic social media behavior that nearly derailed her professional life. Fortunately, Bynes has since reclaimed her health and sobriety. She has re-established herself as a prominent figure in the film industry, much to the anticipation of her eager audience who are excited for her return to the cinema. As we've witnessed, the journey through fame can be as perilous as it is dazzling. The stories of these 15 actors are a stark reminder of the battles fought in the shadows of the spotlight. Their struggles with addiction, the trials of recovery, and the resilience they've shown offer us both a warning and inspiration. Now we turn to you, our iconic Inside community. What are your thoughts on the stories shared today? Have you ever faced a challenge that seemed insurmountable? Drop a Z in the comments to share your triumphs over personal battles and let's support each other in our journeys. If you found value in our video, don't forget to hit that like button. Your support helps us bring more content like this to light. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Iconic Inside and join us on the inside track to the stories behind the stars. Together, let's continue to uncover the truths that lie beneath the surface. Thank you for watching. And remember, every end is a new beginning. Keep shining, Iconic Insiders. 15 actors currently rotting in jail and the reasons why. Even celebrities can run afoul of the law, and some have committed serious offences that warrant lengthy prison sentences. The individuals on this list have been found guilty of severe crimes such as sex offences, drug trafficking and even murder. While some have acknowledged their wrongdoing, others maintain their innocence. Regardless, they are currently serving time behind bars. 
This list highlights 15 actors who are currently incarcerated along with the reasons for their imprisonment. Number one, Jared Fogel. Jared Fogel, the well-known face from Subway Sandwich commercials, had a remarkable weight loss journey. At 20, he weighed over 400 pounds but transformed his life through exercise and diet, losing over half his body weight in less than a year. His success story led to a feature in Men's Health and a career as a Subway representative, starting with his first commercial in 2000. However, his life took a dark turn when he admitted to possessing child pornography and having sex with minors in a 2015 plea deal. He was also found to have engaged in interstate travel for sex and owned illegal pornographic material. Fogel received a 15-plus year prison sentence and must serve at least 13 years before being eligible for parole. Additionally, he was ordered to pay $1.4 million in restitution to 14 victims. Number 2. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr.'s journey is a testament to redemption in Hollywood. Born on April 4, 1965, he showed early promise with acclaimed roles in Less Than Zero and Chaplin earning an Oscar nomination. However, his career was marred by drug addiction, which began in his teenage years. Downey's struggles led to multiple arrests, including in 1996 for possession of heroin, cocaine and a handgun. He faced incarceration from 1999 to 2000 and spent time in a California treatment facility and state prison. This period of self-reflection marked a turning point in his life. After his release, Downey faced challenges, reviving his career due to his history of substance abuse and legal issues. Nevertheless, with support from friends and industry professionals, he made a successful comeback. His iconic portrayal of Tony Stark in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starting with Iron Man in 2008, cemented his redemption. Today, Downey is celebrated for his talent and remarkable recovery, serving as a beacon of hope for second chances and personal resilience. Number 3. R. Kelly. R. Kelly was arrested on July 11, 2019 by federal agents in Chicago on charges of recruiting and sexually exploiting young girls, isolating them from their families, and controlling them to prevent them from seeking help. He faced indictments in both New York and Chicago, with the latter alleging he bribed witnesses and victims in a 2008 child pornography case. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, his trial was rescheduled, and while awaiting trial in a Chicago federal prison, Kelly was attacked by a fellow inmate, resulting in a significant concussion. In June 2022, Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison following his sex trafficking conviction the previous year. Later, in September, he was found guilty of producing child pornography, with his lawyers arguing for a reduced sentence of 11 years. Number 4. Lindsay Lohan and Lindsay Lohan born July 2, 1986, quickly rose to fame as an actress and singer. Her breakout roles in Disney's The Parent Trap and the hit film Mean Girls in 2004 cemented her status as a household name. However, with fame came intense public scrutiny, and her personal life became a constant focus of media attention. By 2007, she faced legal issues, including two arrests for DUI and cocaine possession, resulting in brief jail sentences and mandatory rehab programs. Over the next few years, Lowen's legal troubles persisted due to probation violations and other incidents, affecting her career as film producers hesitated to cast her due to perceived liability. In 2010, Lohan received her longest jail sentence for violating probation terms but served less than two weeks due to overcrowding and good behavior. Despite ongoing struggles with addiction and legal issues, Lohan has attempted several comebacks and remains in the public eye. Her story serves as a stark reminder of the immense pressure young Hollywood actresses often face and the negative consequences it can have on their lives. Number 5. C. Murder C. Murder, born Corey Miller, was convicted of second-degree murder in 2002 for the fatal shooting of Steve Thomas at a nightclub. He began serving a life sentence in Louisiana State Penitentiary in 2009. However, his case has taken a surprising turn. Two key eyewitnesses have recanted their testimony since his incarceration, stating they were coerced into lying under oath. Additionally, reality star Kim Kardashian has unexpectedly come to his defense. 
In 2020, the Supreme Court ruled that jury decisions in significant criminal cases must be unanimous, which could potentially impact Miller's case as he was convicted 10 2 Miller has consistently maintained his innocence and the new developments have raised questions about his guilt. The case remains a controversial and intriguing one, with many advocating for see murder's release, because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos. Please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. Number 6. Winona Ryder Winona Ryder, born October 29, 1971, is a renowned actress known for her roles in Edward Scissorhands, Beetlejuice and Little Women. However, her career was interrupted by a high-profile legal issue in 2001. In December of that year, Ryder was arrested for shoplifting over $5,000 worth of merchandise from Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills, sparking a media frenzy. The case went to trial in 2002, resulting in Ryder's conviction for felony grand theft and vandalism, though she was acquitted of criminal burglary. In December 2002, she received a sentence of three years probation, 480 hours of community service, fines and restitution to the store. Although she avoided jail time, the incident significantly damaged her reputation and career, leading to a several-year hiatus from acting. Ryder gradually returned to the screen, taking on smaller roles before making a notable comeback in 2016 with the Netflix hit series Stranger Things. Her case serves as a stark reminder that even Hollywood stars can face legal troubles with severe professional consequences. Number 7. Michael Jace. Michael Jace, an actor known for his role in the TV series The Shield, was sentenced to 40 years in prison for the murder of his wife, April Jace, in their Los Angeles home in 2014. The shooting occurred in front of their two children, ages 8 and 5, and was reportedly motivated by jealousy. April had wanted a divorce and Michael suspected she was seeing someone else. After calling 911, Michael admitted to the crime. His history of violent behavior was revealed in court, including testimony from his father-in-law and a friend of his first wife, who described incidents of choking, slapping and slamming her against a wall. Michael's acting career spanned two decades and included roles in Southland and the TV film Michael Jordan, An American Hero. The case highlights the devastating consequences of domestic violence and the importance of addressing underlying issues of jealousy and aggression. Number 8. Tim Allen Tim Allen, born Timothy Allen Dick on June 13, 1953, is a renowned actor and comedian known for his roles in Home Improvement and as the voice of Buzz Lightyear in the Toy Story films. However, before his Hollywood success, Allen faced legal troubles. In October 1978, he was arrested at the Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport for possessing over 650 grams of cocaine. He pleaded guilty to drug trafficking charges, potentially facing life imprisonment. In exchange for a reduced sentence, Allen cooperated with authorities, providing information on other drug dealers. In 1981, he received a sentence of three to seven years in federal prison, serving two years and four months at the Sandstone Federal Correctional Institution in Minnesota. His prison experience led to a turning point in his life, prompting him to pursue comedy upon release. Allen's successful entertainment career followed, and he publicly acknowledged his past mistakes, using his experiences to caution others. His story exemplifies the possibility of redemption and transformation, after a significant legal offence showcasing the potential for overcoming adversity and achieving success. Number 9. Shannon Richardson Shannon Richardson, an actress known for her role on The Walking Dead, pleaded guilty in 2013 to producing and mailing toxic letters to then-President Barack Obama and two others. She purchased ingredients for the scheme using her husband's credit card and produced the poison ricin in her home, where she lived with her husband and four children, while also being pregnant. The letters, which discussed gun control, were sent to Obama, New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg and Michael Glaze, a member of Mayors Against Illegal Guns, Richardson attempted to frame her husband by planting evidence in his car and lunchbox, but was ultimately caught and sentenced to 18 years in prison. She is currently incarcerated at a federal prison in Fort Worth, Texas, and is scheduled for release in 2029 without the possibility of parole. Number 10. Wesley Snipes Wesley Snipes, a renowned actor and martial artist born July 31, 1962, rose to fame in the 1990s with roles in action films like Demolition Man, Blade and Passenger 57. However, in 2006, Snipes faced a different challenge when charged with tax evasion. 
and attempting to defraud the government of millions by failing to file tax returns for several years. Although acquitted of felony tax fraud and conspiracy charges in 2008, Snipes was convicted of three misdemeanor counts of failing to file a federal income tax return. He received the maximum sentence of three years in prison in 2010, which he began serving in December of that year. After nearly two years at the McKean Federal Correctional Institution in Pennsylvania, Snipes was released in April 2013. During his sentence, Snipes remained in the news and has since been involved in legal disputes over his convictions. He has also used his time in prison to further his studies of philosophy and religion. Although Snipes has returned to acting, his career has not fully recovered. His experience serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of financial mistakes and the importance of tax compliance, even for high-profile individuals. It also highlights the broader consequences of such actions, which can harm not only the individual but also their professional reputation and public status. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. Number 11. Todd and Julie Chrisley Todd and Julie Chrisley, stars of the reality show Chrisley Knows Best, were charged with tax evasion, conspiracy, bank fraud and wire fraud on August 12, 2019. The couple, known for their wealthy lifestyle and family dynamics, were found guilty on all counts on June 7, 2022. Todd was sentenced to 12 years in prison, which he is serving at FPC Pensacola, while Julie received a seven-year sentence currently being served at FMC Lexington, Kentucky. Their legal troubles highlight the consequences of financial misconduct and the importance of transparency and honesty in financial dealings, even for high-profile individuals. The case also raises questions about the impact of their convictions on their family and the future of their reality show. Number 12. Felicity Huffman. Felicity Huffman, a renowned actress known for her roles in Desperate Housewives and Trans America, was embroiled in a high-profile college admission scandal in 2019. Huffman was accused of paying $15,000 to have a proctor alter her daughter's SAT answers, and she pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit honest services mail fraud in May 2019. She received a sentence of 14 days in federal prison, a $30,000 fine, 250 hours of community service, and a year of supervised release in September 2019. The scandal sparked widespread public outrage and damaged Huffman's reputation. Since completing her sentence, she has maintained a low profile. Her case serves as a reminder of the legal consequences of unethical behavior, even for those in positions of privilege and influence. It also highlights the importance of fairness and equal opportunities in education and society. Number 13, Oscar Pistorius. Oscar Pistorius, a former Olympic and Paralympic athlete, was involved in a highly publicized case in 2013 when he shot and killed his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, at his home in Pretoria, South Africa on Valentine's Day. Pistorius claimed he believed Steenkamp was an intruder hiding in his bathroom, but he was arrested and charged with murder. Despite his defense, he was convicted of culpable homicide and sentenced to five years in prison, plus three years with a three-year suspension for reckless endangerment. However, after serving just one year, authorities overturned the verdict and sentenced him to an additional 13 years and five months for murder. Pistorius may be eligible for parole in 2023, but he could remain imprisoned until 2030. Number 14, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, a former professional boxer, made history at 20 by becoming the youngest heavyweight champion. However, his successful boxing career was often overshadowed by his personal life, marked by legal issues and controversy. In 1992, Tyson was convicted of rape and aberrant sexual conduct against Desiree Washington, a Miss Black America finalist, and sentenced to six years in prison, serving three years at Indiana's Plainfield Correctional Facility. After his release, Tyson's career and public image suffered significantly. Despite attempts to revive his career, he faced numerous challenges, including a brief suspension from boxing after biting off a portion of Evander Holyfield's ear in 1997. Nevertheless, Tyson has worked to reinvent himself in recent years, appearing in films and TV shows, starting a cannabis company, and returning to the ring for exhibition matches. 
His story highlights the complex relationship between celebrity and personal behavior, and the possibility of redemption and personal growth. Number 15, Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein, a former film producer, is currently serving a 23-year prison sentence for sexual assault convictions related to two women, Miriam Haley and Jessica Mann. Despite numerous allegations from dozens of women over the years, Weinstein's downfall came as a result of the charges brought forward by these two individuals. In 2018, Weinstein was arrested in New York and charged with multiple counts of rape, sexual abuse and sexual misconduct. He was also under investigation for sex crimes in California and London. After posting a $1 million bond and being placed under ankle monitor surveillance, Weinstein faced additional felony sex offence charges. He denied the allegations, claiming the women were willing participants in his sexual activities. In 2020, Weinstein was found guilty of a criminal sexual act against Haley and third-degree rape, but acquitted of predatory sexual assault and first-degree rape against man. As a result, he received a 23-year prison sentence and is now a registered sex offender, and there you have it, 15 celebrities who face the consequences of their actions. Their stories serve as a reminder that no one is above the law, regardless of wealth or fame. What do you think about these cases? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a number 9 in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe to Iconic Inside for more content that delves into the lives of the rich and famous. Join the conversation and let's explore more iconic stories together. The truth about Macaulay Culkin. Buckle up because we're about to unravel the untold jaw-dropping saga of Macaulay Culkin. Hollywood's golden boy, a household name turned enigma. What's the real story behind his dazzling rise and the shadows that followed? From the spotlight to startling headlines, we've got secrets that will leave you speechless. This is the truth about Macaulay Culkin. Prepare to be amazed and trust me, you won't see this coming. The Culkin family, consisting of seven children, lived in a small Manhattan apartment. Despite the cramped conditions, the family continued to grow. Macaulay, affectionately called Mac, began acting at four years old, appearing in films like Rocket Gibraltar and Uncle Buck. However, his early acting career wasn't driven by personal ambition, but rather his father Kit's unfulfilled aspirations. Kit, a former dancer and actor, had minor success and redirected his ambition onto his children, starting with Shane. Macaulay felt like an incidental choice and Kieran noted, my parents were running a little theater. Whenever a production needed a kid, they were like, what age and what gender? We've got seven of them right over here. Macaulay's talent eventually stood out, surpassing Shane's. Billy Hopkins, a casting director, recalled, he was daring and if you can say a six-year-old is daring, he just wasn't afraid to do anything. I mean, he'd do whatever you asked and more. A quality that secured Mac near instant success in casting rooms. His breakthrough with Uncle Buck, raking in $67 million at the box office, soon positioned Macaulay as the family's financial pillar. Although Kit was blind to Macaulay's unique allure, he recognized that Mac was his conduit to Hollywood fame which steered them towards a role destined to reshape the Culkin family's destiny. John Hughes conceived the idea for Home Alone while preparing for a family trip to Europe. As he made a checklist, he joked about including his children and wondered what would happen if he accidentally left his 10-year-old behind. This sparked a series of questions and during a packing break, Hughes wrote an eight-page outline for the script. Having worked with Macaulay Culkin on Uncle Buck, Hughes tailored the screenplay for Macaulay to play Kevin McAllister. Released in November 1990, Home Alone became a massive hit, earning nearly $500 million worldwide and becoming the third highest grossing film at the time. Its success propelled Macaulay to A-list status. Macaulay had little to no say in his acting career, from selecting roles to even being briefed about them. I never chose the projects. My parents essentially chose them for me, he revealed, portraying himself as merely following orders akin to an automaton. This dynamic contributed to the escalating tensions between Macaulay and his father. Initially, the Culkin household hadn't reached affluence. Macaulay's payment for home alone was merely $100,000. Recognizing the need to leverage this opportunity for significant financial gain, his father swiftly secured Macaulay a role in My Girl for which he was compensated $1.5 million. 
During that era, child labour regulations permitted a child to work up to 10 hours a day under the condition that a parent or legal guardian was present throughout. This stipulation forced Kit to exit the labour market to supervise Macaulay, indirectly leading to Kit's dependence on a portion of Macaulay's earnings. Moreover, their work necessitated frequent travel outside New York. According to Macaulay, despite the extensive time spent together, the father-son relationship remained distant. We didn't like each other. I'm like going around the country, locked in a room with a guy who doesn't like me. He was kind of jealous. I mean, everything that he tried to do in his life, I excelled at before I was 10 years old. He was a bad man. He was a bad man. He was abusive, physically and mentally. The shadows of fame further complicated Macaulay's life. Public recognition meant losing any sense of anonymity. Simple strolls could quickly escalate into mobs of attention. On one such occasion, Macaulay tried to blend in with the crowds by pulling a hat over his face, only to have a woman forcibly remove it, recognize him and dismissively comment, yeah, it's him, followed by a critique of his looks. Camouflage from the public's prying eyes was not an option for him. Despite the perception that he should be ecstatic about his accomplishments, none of his siblings could grasp the totality of his experiences. Macaulay Culkin found a kindred spirit in Michael Jackson, who also endured a demanding father. Joe Jackson, like Kit Culkin, pushed his children to fame using harsh methods, including physical punishment. Macaulay and Michael bonded over their shared experiences despite their 23-year age gap. Michael, 33, often befriended children and hosted them at his Neverland Ranch, enjoying their company and even holding sleepovers. This peculiar friendship brought comfort to Macaulay, who found solace in someone who understood his complex family dynamics. Macaulay and his brother Kieran were frequent visitors to Neverland Ranch with their parents' approval. Macaulay recalls having stayed in Michael's two-story bedroom with its trio of bathrooms on about ten separate occasions. We played video games, we played in the museum park. Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories and has three bathrooms. So when I slept in his bedroom, us, throughout Michael's tumultuous life, Macaulay remained a steadfast ally. He refrained from any public denunciation. His recollections of Michael were unfailingly fond. In 2005, when taking the stand, Macaulay declared that allegations of abuse against Michael were patently absurd and untrue, firmly stating this under oath because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos. Please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, the sequel to Home Alone, released in 1992, replicated the triumph of its predecessor. For this outing, Macaulay's compensation soared to $4 million, and the movie grossed over $359 million worldwide. Despite initial critique for its similar storyline with minor alterations, this sequel has ascended to become the series' most cherished and iconic installment over time. This extraordinary success significantly elevated the Culkin family's status. Macaulay established himself as the zenith of child stardom in Hollywood, a title unrivaled since the days of Shirley Temple, placing him at the pinnacle of child celebrity fame. Kit Culkin, Macaulay's father, consequently acquired considerable clout in the entertainment industry as the gatekeeper to his son, compelling studio executives to negotiate through him to reach Macaulay. By 1993, Premier magazine acknowledged Kit Culkin's burgeoning power, placing him 48th on its list of Hollywood's most influential figures, surpassing industry stalwarts like Michael Douglas and Eddie Murphy. However, this ascendancy wasn't without its challenges. Complaints arose from studio officials about Kit's overbearing attempts to exert editorial control over Macaulay's projects, an approach that quickly made him unpopular. Unbeknownst to many, at 12, Macaulay Culkin's career had reached its zenith and a decline was on the horizon. Macaulay Culkin starred in the 1993 suspense drama The Good Son, playing a malevolent child named Henry. Despite earning $60 million globally, a relatively modest sum compared to Home Alone, the film performed respectably, given its different genre. Macaulay's performance stood out even as the narrative faced criticism. By 1993, Macaulay was exhausted from the constant filming schedule and asked his father Kit for a break to pursue normalcy and education. Kit agreed, but soon assigned Macaulay another role, revealing Macaulay's lack of control. 
Despite earning millions, Kit maintained dominance, even dictating Macaulay's sleeping arrangements, relegating him to the couch. In 1994, Macaulay appeared in several films, including The Nutcracker, Getting Even With Dad, The Page Master, and Richie Rich. Although he earned an impressive $8 million per film, approximately $16.5 million today, the movies struggled to resonate with audiences except for Richie Rich, which shared a similar tone with Home Alone and grossed $75 million worldwide. This period highlighted Macaulay's difficulty in replicating the success of Home Alone outside of the franchise. My father and mother finally called it quits, which was one of the best things that ever happened. I was able to walk away from the business which I had been wanting to do for a while. This poignant reflection from Macaulay points to a turning point amidst personal family upheavals. The fallout from his parents' split ushered in a contentious custody battle with Macaulay caught in the middle, preferring not to stay with his father. Amidst this turmoil, gaining control over his finances became a necessity for Macaulay, leading to the removal of both parents' names from his trust fund and appointing an executor to manage his assets. This sequence of events led to a significant estrangement from his father, who subsequently vanished from Macaulay's life after a final act of taking his memorabilia. The narrative around Macaulay shifted as more details of his home life emerged, with New York Magazine observing a change in public perception from fascination to concern. Kit Culkin's reputation for being difficult further isolated them in the industry. After a decade away from acting, Macaulay sought a semblance of normalcy by attending high school for social reasons and marrying Rachel Minor at 17. Exploring New York City's counterculture, Macaulay lived a life markedly different from his childhood, a transformation that did not escape media scrutiny, echoing the sensationalized coverage faced by stars like Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton. Culkin reflected on his past experiences, noting, I never did anything more than any upper-class Upper West Side kid would. We weren't like all squatting in the corner shooting heroin. This statement from 2001 suggests that at 21, Macaulay believed he had successfully navigated the most challenging periods of his life, unaware that his most trying times still lay ahead. In 2003, at 23 years old, Macaulay sought to reinvent himself and re-enter the public eye, perhaps aiming to establish a more grown-up persona. He chose the biographical drama Party Monster, rated MA15+, as his vehicle for a comeback. Unfortunately, this turned out to be an ill-fated choice. The film was critically panned, earning a disheartening score of 29 on Rotten Tomatoes, and its financial return was meagre, struggling to surpass $1 million against a production budget of $5 million. Macaulay found himself in a challenging position, seeming too mature for younger viewers while his former child audience had moved on. Because YouTube will prioritize interactive videos, please comment OK if you find this video interesting. Thank you. Attempting to rebound from Party Monster, Macaulay secured a supporting role in the controversial comedy Saved. Although the film received mixed reactions, it performed decently and Macaulay's individual performance was met with favorable reviews. His return to a positive public discourse was short-lived, however, as he was soon arrested for drug possession. While driving on I-44 in Oklahoma City, Macaulay and his friend were stopped for speeding, leading to the discovery of 17 grams of marijuana, 8 Xanax pills and 16 clonopin, none prescribed to him. The media and public were quick to stereotype Macaulay as another lost child star. Despite this, Macaulay downplayed the incident, expressing, I'm supposed to be a lot more effed up than I am. I took a certain amount of pride that I wasn't that cliché. He resisted the narrative that he had a significant problem, yet life was about to deliver even more challenges. Following his divorce in 2002, Macaulay embarked on a relationship with Mila Kunis. Committed to protecting their privacy, they seldom appeared in the media together and maintained a low-profile relationship, though it lasted seven years. After several attempts to revive his acting career, in the early 2000s fell flat, Macaulay withdrew from the limelight. Reports surfaced that Macaulay had proposed to Mila multiple times. Each proposal declined. Then, in 2008, Macaulay was confronted with devastating news. 
Macaulay Culkin's older sister, Dakota, tragically passed away on December 10th after being struck by a vehicle while walking home from Brennan's Bar in West Los Angeles. She suffered severe head trauma and was taken to UCLA Hospital, where she ultimately succumbed to her injuries. As she kept a low profile, there are few pictures of Dakota available. This devastating loss came at a difficult time for Macaulay, as he had recently gone through a breakup with Mila Kunis after seven years together. Mila hinted that she may have contributed to the split, leaving Macaulay during his most vulnerable moment. Following this, Macaulay's public appearances raised concerns due to his gaunt and unhealthy appearance, sparking speculation about drug use. Sensationalized articles claimed he was struggling with heroin addiction and had only six months to live, citing his past drug arrest. However, these claims were unsubstantiated. Years later, Macaulay acknowledged that drugs had played a role in his life, stating, I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't had drugs in my life at some point or another. He has openly admitted that this period was the darkest time in his life, marked by struggles with eating, sleeping and finding purpose. Macaulay Culkin faced another crushing blow with the passing of his close friend Michael Jackson in 2009. The darkness persisted and he continued to crave solitude, but the media persisted in sensationalizing his story, labeling him the cursed child star. Seeking a creative outlet, Macaulay formed the comedy musical group Pizza Underground, performing pizza theme song covers. In 2013, he made a sudden move to Paris, seeking a fresh start. Desperate for normalcy, Macaulay found solace in France, where he could escape the constant scrutiny and rumors. For four years, he blended in with the locals, strolling through Paris with a baguette in hand, enjoying a sense of anonymity and freedom from the spotlight. Macaulay Culkin's relationship with his father, Kit Culkin, has been strained, with Kit stating he no longer considers Macaulay his son. Macaulay likely reciprocates these feelings. However, his life took a positive turn when he met his now wife, Brenda Song, on the set of Changeland in 2018. As fellow child stars, they bonded over their shared experiences. Macaulay was hesitant at first, fearing she would leave like others had, but they got engaged and are still together. Brenda has brought joy and new purpose to Macaulay's life. He previously thought he'd never have children due to his traumatic childhood, but Brenda gave birth to their son Dakota, named after Macaulay's late sister, in 2021. Since meeting Brenda, Macaulay has pursued various creative projects including a comedy podcast, bunny ears, TV roles and voiceover work. He even made a successful return to acting in the 10th season of American Horror Story in 2021, earning praise for his performance as Mickey. He's now more active on social media and has given numerous public interviews and podcasts. Despite his father's poor health, Macaulay refuses to let his child meet his grandfather, likely due to the abusive past. Nevertheless, Macaulay is grateful for his life, acknowledging the opportunities and wealth that came with his childhood stardom. Although he faced abuse, public scrutiny and potential drug issues, he's living life on his own terms. By age 10, he had achieved everything his father never could, and since then he's been forging his own path. In summary, we've dived deep into Macaulay's journey, celebrating his highs and embracing his lows. If you're part of Macaulay's fan family, show your love in the comments with an M. Love what you heard? Smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to Iconic Inside for more stories that matter to you.